especially when compared to things like Windows and Mac OS, Linux has his reputation of really long running hardware support, but even Linux sometimes has its limits. Things like the planned phase out of the Intel i486 from last year, a CPU from 1989, following a very similar phase out from 10 years prior of the Intel i386, a CPU from 1985. Now, unlike Apple, it's not a matter of how old the product is. This isn't a planned obsolescence thing. Two things matter here. Firstly, do the people developing that part of the kernel actually still have the hardware they need to make sure the drivers for that ancient hardware actually still work? Like, can you boot a modern kernel on this hardware? And two, are there any users actually using a modern kernel with this hardware, because it's all well and good to say, oh, I have this embedded system deployed 20 years ago, it's still running a 20 year old kernel, it works great. But is there anybody running like a 6.6 .6 kernel with 30 year old hardware? Not somebody on Reddit saying, oh, it would be neat to do so, don't remove the driver. No. Do you actually have a system where you are using it? It can just be a single user. That is reason enough to keep it around. But does that user exist? And recently, Arne Bergman asked exactly this question about legacy Wi-Fi drivers. Not every single driver, but a handful of drivers that it's probably the case that nobody is actually using. I found a number of network drivers that are especially obsolete. In particular, for 802.11b, which is 11 megabits per second, or even older wireless networks. This, under modern Wi-Fi naming, would be called Wi-Fi 2, a standard from 1999. Using non-bus master ISA and PCM CIA style bus interfaces. This is a connector that I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people watching this channel haven't seen. The older people definitely would have, but... There probably hasn't been a consumer desktop system built with one of these ports in at least like 15, 20 years. So ISA is a standard from 1981 and it still sees some level of industrial use. And this is PCMCIA, a standard from 1990, better known as PC card. And due to just how much industrial use it has, there is modern ISA equipment being made, modern expansion cards and all this stuff. It's not just this ancient hardware that people are relying on notch breaking. You're probably never going to see one on the desktop, but certain industries absolutely rely on them and it's probably never going to go away. And using the legacy wireless extension IOCTLs rather than the Netlink interfaces that were meant to replace them in 2007. All of these drivers are obsolete or orphaned. So here are the drivers that are almost certainly on the chopping block. These are probably unused. The ones a bit later may still see some level of use. Firstly, the Atmel AT76C502, 504, and 506 is a PIO only. PCMCAA, Mini PCI, and Card Bus 802.11b driver with incomplete CFG 802.11 support. This is the more modern system for doing networking. Cisco Aeronet is an 802.11b PCMCIA and Mini PCI with limited support for Card Bus DMA and for CFG 802.11. Host AP is an ISA slash PCMCIA style 802.11b driver supporting only wireless extensions and some custom IOCTLs already removed. Aviator slash Raytheon is an early PCM CIA driver, apparently predating 802.11b and only supporting wireless extensions. Now, as funny as it would be, that Aviator is not the same sunglasses Aviator that is now Ray-Bans. That is a whole separate thing. It's just an amusing coincidence. Planet WL3501 is another PCM CIA driver for pre-802.11b interfaces to megabit per second with incomplete CFG 802.11 support. We are talking Wi-Fi 802.11. No extra letter, no extra number. The first one. This is the earliest standard from 1997.
Zydas ZD1201 is a USB 802.11b driver with limited support for CFG802.11. Orinoco, I think is how you say that, is a PIO only ISA PCMCIA 802.11b device with extra bus interface connections for PCI, card bus, and mini PCI, and a few pre-2002 Apple Power Mac variants. It sports both wireless extensions and CFG802.11, but I could not tell if it requires using both. And finally, the newest one, new is a relative term, Wireless RNDS USB is a new style CFG802.11 driver with 802.11b and 802.11g USB hardware from around 2004 to 2006. When we say 802.11g, this is Wi-Fi 3, 54 megabit. This makes it more modern than any of the others, but call one of the people in the Wi-Fi part of the kernel already classified it as legacy in this commit right here. Now, you might be thinking, if all of these drivers still technically work, why bother getting rid of them? Well, that's the thing. Nobody developing the Wi-Fi drivers in the kernel actually know if they work. So, <laughs> call one of the developers of the Wi-Fi part of the kernel chimed in to say, we, the wireless folks, have been talking about dropping legacy drivers on and off for several years now. The problem is that we don't know which of them work and which not. For example, if I remember correctly, some reported recently that WL3501 still works. Personally, I would be extremely happy to remove all of the ancient drivers as it reduces the amount of code for us to maintain. But is that the right thing to do for the users? I don't have an answer for that comments are very welcome. I've also been wondering if I should add warnings like this to every ancient driver to see if there are any users left. WL3501 wireless driver were removed in 2024. If the driver still works and you are using it, send a report now to this email here to avoid the removal. But with the long release cycle the kernels and distros have, I doubt waiting a year is enough. It should be more like three years. Now, Greg Crow Hartman completely disagrees that it should be more like three years, or even one year. No matter what the time frame is, it's never going to line up with all the distros or catch everyone properly. I recommend just delete all the ones you feel are not being used in a patch that removes them one by one, so that it is trivial to revert if someone shows up and says, hey, my device stopped working a few years in the future. So if they're removed one by one, if someone says, we need the driver, just revert that individual commit and everything good to go. And Greg isn't the only one who thinks that. Jacob from the Ethernet team says, for what it's worth in Ethernet, we do what Greg says. Delete it. If someone complains, we revert it back. The revert did actually happen once. It was pretty painless. Greg even took it into the stable tree, if I remember correctly. Maybe there's going to be one person that complains about these drivers. But most of these can probably be removed without much concern at all. However... There are some quite newer drivers on the list as well. We're still talking legacy drivers, but they're legacy just barely. Intel IPW2X00 is a PCI Busmaster device for 802.11a, b, and g. So that takes us up to Wi-Fi 3 that was popular in Centrino branded laptops from 2003 to 2005. Now, I would say no one cares about these, but people do run ThinkPads from around the same era, so someone probably is using them. Marvel Libertus is an 802.11a, b, and g device with a number of bus interfaces, USB, SDIO, SPI, PCMCAA, and incomplete CFG802.11 support. This was used in the OLPCXO laptop and some other embedded devices that are still supported. Once again, it's in that range where maybe there's still some use. Some Broadcom B43XX devices use the SSB bus that can be abstracted through PCMCIA. All of them use CFG802.11. When I talked about this on Mastodon, someone did mention they were actually using this, so clearly there's at least one user out there. And finally, 
the Sony PlayStation 3 Gaelic Ethernet driver contains a bridge for 802.11b and G client chip that is controlled through a hypervisor interface from the OS, and it uses wireless extensions in the kernel driver. This one led to a very long and very interesting discussion. So if you didn't know, there was a time where Sony officially supported installing Linux onto the PlayStation. They had a official Linux distro for the PlayStation 2, and on the PlayStation 3, prior to firmware update 3.21 on April 1st in 2010, which is a hilarious time to break something, they supported installing Linux or FreeBSD. When they removed it, this led to a class action lawsuit where people got paid 65 dollars. What a great result. But if you didn't update the firmware, you rolled back the firmware, you found other exploits later in the future, you could keep using Linux. Anyway, onto that conversation. I would prefer to remove IPW2x00 and PS3 Gaelic Wireless as well. I have not seen any evidence that there will be users for those drivers. If we find out there really are users, I can easily add the drivers back. If you didn't update the firmware, you could keep on using Linux, and people may have found a vulnerability in more recent firmware versions that allow them to run custom software. I don't know, it's been 10 plus years since I touched a PS3. But according to Jeff here, there is still a considerable user base for the PS3, so we must keep the PS3 Gaelic wireless driver. And you know what? That's fair. If people are using it, no point getting rid of it. Now, rather than just deleting the drivers outright like Greg suggested, the initial plan was to move them from the stable tree into staging. Which doesn't make any sense to me. Stuff in drivers slash staging is to get code into the main portion of the kernel tree, not out. If these aren't being used, let's just drop them entirely. What is the need to have them move to staging only to have me delete them in the next release after that or after that. Why delay, and why not just remove them now? And I think for the first time, maybe ever, I saw a actually maybe not a bad suggestion from Pharonix. What about a new unstaging area where things being retired go? So basically, it's like a deprecation area, and they can stay there, and then eventually be removed. And that's not a bad idea, but it sort of goes back to what Greg was already saying. Why move them to another area just to have Greg delete them? Just delete them yourself, and then bring them back if, you know, someone complains about it. Ultimately, the result is exactly the same, you just have a time delay. So, if you happen to use any of the drivers I mentioned, or any other legacy drivers, do make sure you speak up about the fact that you're actually using them. Because it may come a time where the developers just decide nobody's using these anymore, we don't want to maintain them, so I guess just get rid of them. So that is going to be it for me. Let me know if you use these drivers. Better yet, let the developers know. And if you happen to just have some of this hardware lying around and maybe you want to go and test it out, See if it still works. I would love to know. So let me know your thoughts down below. If you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon scribes, the Libero Pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And just get something at least like 802.11n, Wi Fi 4 maybe. That should work.